Absolutely everything about this flight comfortably fit into the short and sweet category. Today we've got a quick turboprop hop to Jaipur on Indigo. So let's get into it. Welcome to Jaipur. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for my flight or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. The internet needs more honest content, plain and simple, and that's why I'm here. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well. I self-fund all of my videos and I don't alert any company that I'm coming because I want to have as normal of an experience as possible. Then I'll give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion. Ever since I was a little kid, I have always just loved looking out the window. I suppose that's a big part of how this channel came to be to begin with. But even just driving on roads in a new place, there's nothing quite like it. And Indian roads are always full of more sights than Disney World in December. I'm now heading from Lake Pachola in the middle of Udaipur to the airport, around a 40 minute drive. You do get spoiled in India with really nice airport transfers being relatively really affordable. The regional airport here in Udaipur is just a little guy, serving around 17 flights per day to 11 destinations. I'm not sure if this is a seasonal or low season thing, but this flight wasn't actually on sale until six weeks before departure. Originally, I had a Vistara flight connecting in Mumbai. If you know where Udaipur, Mumbai, and Jaipur are, you know how ridiculous that sounds, but at the time, it was the best that I could get. Once inside the departure hall, well, there's there's not a whole lot to see. This is not an airport where you're going to be pulling out your phone to check your lounge buddy or priority pass app. I had express check-in, which wasn't really necessary, but I do find that airlines in general do treat you a little bit better if they see you've paid for some sort of add-ons. So in today's case, I was offered an XL seat for free, and they kindly turned a blind eye towards my carry-on bag's hefty weight. Once through security, you're spit out directly into the gate lounge, and frankly, it's got everything you could possibly need. A smoking room, a ping pong lounge, a mysterious cube, and a pair of he and she bathrooms. As is the norm with Indigo, everything was on time, but the boarding area was just slightly annoying. It seems that there's no real PA system, so all of the announcements were made via one of those hip-mounted loud boxes attached to a low-quality microphone. Our ATR landed a bit early, one of 48 that they currently have in the fleet, and what a fleet it is. As we ride a bus for like 12 seconds and then begin to board, let me tell you a bit about Indigo. If you'd like a longer history, check out my last Indigo report. Currently, they fly to around 110 destinations, 80 of which are in India. Normally, you know I like to make my route maps, but for Indigo, allow me to give you a visual instead. Imagine a map of India, and now draw lines over the country until the entire thing is covered. Voila, that's exactly how Indigo's domestic route map actually looks. They have a whopping 63% domestic market share, and by daily departures are currently the eighth largest airline on earth. In fact, to update the same stat that I mentioned last time, their current 1900 daily flights dwarf the thousand daily flights of Air India, Vistara, and Spicejet combined. Then there's the fleet. They have over 335 aircraft on hand now, and in the past year have taken delivery of 66 new aircraft. But that's just a fraction of the story. Indigo currently has an insane 967 aircraft on order, 500 of which made up the world's single largest aircraft order earlier this year seemingly trying to one-up the massive Air India order of 470 jets just a few weeks earlier. Here's my seat for today, two Foxtrot. I knew it was going to be a little bit awkward flying in a face-to-face -face seat, but on an ATR, where knee space is always in short supply, I was more than happy to risk playing footsie for about an hour. 
The bulkhead seats on the other side are in fact the best option on board though. We all know that low cost carriers universally get crapped on day in and day out, but Indigo is just a different animal. Besides seats that are admittedly as slimline as slimline could physically be, they really do outperform everyone in just about every metric. We began our pushback, early of course, and then made our way to the runway, running the length of it before pulling a Yui to line up for takeoff. The carrier, launched in 2006, has the lowest cancellation rate globally, and is in the top five most punctual airlines on Earth. It is truly, in every sense of the word, an incredibly well-oiled and efficient machine. All of this now being led by Peter Elbers, the new CEO as of 2022, who was at the helm of KLM for the eight years prior to that. All right, sit back, relax, the spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next. Indigo offers a variety of well-priced bundles when you book, and I typically go for the Super 6E package, which includes just about everything, including a snack on board. When selecting in advance, you have quite a large selection. We were served within 10 minutes of taking off. For today, I chose the home-style paneer flatbread, and it hit the spot. Hot, but not dry, flavorful, but not overly salty or laden with sugar. And guess what? Time to get back down to Earth. Enjoy the desert views and stay tuned for a bit of a special clip after we land. Do you ever wonder why other content creators and I always ask you to click that thumbs up button and subscribe and click on notifications, etc, etc, etc? Well, it's for two reasons. First, it's kind of easy to forget. We all forget about it sometimes, myself included. Secondly, it truly does help this channel and any other channel continue to grow by increasing engagement. So please, click it, subscribe, and share with friends and family. If you'd like to support my work even further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. As we were taxiing to the gate, I saw one of these little guys. And then another. And another. And another. By the time we got near the terminal, you could see a good dozen of them lining up towards the end of the runway. And then they all took off in formation. While I can't say for sure that it was specially arranged just for me, I can say that it was a pretty cool welcome to Jaipur.
We deplaned, made it to the terminal, and that is that. Told you it was short and sweet. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of the India content that I have coming up. I'll see you next time from the incredibly unique Alila Fort Bishingar. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.